Okay, in this video, we're going to go through all of the tables of logistic regression. Um, it's going to look slightly different than my first video, but this will match the data set that you have in hand. So we're going to predict survival rate. So did they survive? Yes or no? By our numeric code for male and female. Female is coded one, so it's really were you female or not. Um, we have passenger class that I split into first class, yes, no, second class, yes, no, third class, yes, no. Because you have to be in one of the three, third class becomes redundant. If you include it in the model, SPSS will actually kick it out. So I'm just going to do first class and second class to look at the influence of those two. Um, we're going to look at age as well. So in this data set, I've removed all missing cases. So we have 756 cases of passengers on the Titanic. Again, in SPSS, we have this beginning block. That's our null model. We're going to just skip over that for a moment, and I will come back to that for those who are interested. Typically, in logistic regression, we're just looking at these tables right here. The first table is our model significance as a whole. So when we're thinking about linear regression, this was in a NOVA table. For logistic regression, we're using a chi-square statistic. We're going to look at this first one called STEP. And that model is showing that it is very significant. So that means some, at least one of our predictors, is doing a really good job of predicting survival rates. We have our model summary with our R-squares. These are called pseudo R-squares. Um, I like Nagel Kirker, Kirkle. R square. Um, and so we can say that 47.7% of our variance is being explained by this model. The classification table is new. So what this is doing is it's saying our observed data, so the, based on the actual data, how good of a job is this model doing to predict survival? And so we can say that of those who did not survive, this model predicted 372 of them to not survive, but it also predicted 71 people to survive who did not in real life. Um, and then of those who did survive, we're predicting 91 of them should not have, but they did. And we're predicting 222 of them to survive that did in fact survive. Overall, we are predicting 78.6% correct which is pretty awesome. Our last table looks a lot like our coefficient table from linear regression, and it's very similar in that it has our beta values for our equation, our significance values, seeing if each of the parts of our equation are significant individually. We're not we're using a different kind of a t-test in this case. But then we have this new column over here, EXPB. In JASP, this was called the odds ratio because that's literally what it is. And so if we go through this, what we're going to find is our numeric code for sex was female or not. So if you are female, you are 13.89 times more likely to have survived than a male. If you are in first class, you are 12 times more likely to have survived. Second class is three times more likely to have survived. And we can see that age is also an influence, and we'll see that this one is negative, meaning lower ages were more likely to survive. Um, but we don't have an odds ratio above one, so that's not super helpful in the odds of survival, but it does seem to be contributing to helping to predict uh, survival.